Welcome to Frank's Diana Explains and to the Formal Languages part of the Discrete Mathematics course at Cambridge. Even though this is a first-year course, by the time I get here, a fair number of you has already been exposed to regular expressions, perhaps through Unix tools such as grep or Emacs, or maybe because you've used regular expressions in a scripting language such as Python or Perl. In this course, I'm not going to teach you how to write and debug complicated regular expressions. We shall instead concentrate on the fundamentals, on the expressive power of regular expressions, on their limits and on how they relate to regular languages. And we shall start with a very mathematically flavoured distinction between concrete and abstract syntax that you probably never saw when you encountered regular expressions before. So, the next section of our um, deck of slides talks of abstract syntax trees. Abstract syntax trees, uh, and then the next slide instead says concrete syntax. Uh, so, are we talking abstract or concrete? Well, um, the concrete syntax is a set of symbols, and the abstract syntax is a way of representing uh, things in the concrete syntax in a slightly more general way. And if I'm just going on like this, then uh, things make little sense. So I'll just show the abstract version of what we had previously, where these are things that are not linearized into a sequence of symbols. They're represented here as a tree. And the nodes in this tree are uh, vertices which combine subtrees. And so the let uh, is a uh, thing that combines this, um, this function over here, which is started by this, this uh, fun. In fact, I should, should really be taking the previous slide again. It's a bit um, of a pain to do, but um, I'm relating sub-expressions uh, of my previously linearized concrete syntax into chunks that make sense according to uh, what the meaning of this is. But at the moment, I'm not really interested in the meaning. I'm interested in their structure. And this gives me some structure, which the concrete syntax doesn't quite show. We are making this introduction because we want to give um, uh, syntax for regular expressions. Regular expressions is something that this is supposed to teach you from zero, but every time I get to this point, uh, I see people have already seen regular ex expressions to death. Is there anybody in the audience who has never worked with regular expressions? Then hands up if you've never seen regular expressions. There's two, three, four, five, six. Ah, coming out of the woodwork now. OK, right. Uh, there are a few people who've never seen regular expressions. Uh, OK, for their benefit, regular expressions are a way of expressing patterns in the spirit of when you are in the command line shell and you say, instead of uh, naming files, you say, uh, list all the files that finish with uh, .txt by putting star .txt. That's a way of expressing a pattern. That pattern is not a regular expression. The regular expressions are a mechanism for expressing more complicated patterns. And there also exists an asterisk in there, but it has a different meaning. Uh, it doesn't mean replace with any character. It means repeat the previous regular expression zero or more times. And in fact, the regular expressions, as we are going to define them in this course, which are a kind of uh, strict, no frills version of the regular expressions that you might find uh, in uh, your Unix tools, are based on the alphabet of the strings plus these meta symbols that don't occur in the actual strings uh, of your language. And these symbols are this other epsilon. And notice the difference between this shape of epsilon and the other one that we used previously, which looked like this. It's not the same as this epsilon. So 
this epsilon over here meant the empty string, and this one means a regular expression matching the empty string. This symbol that looks like the empty set means a regular expression that never matches anything. This vertical bar means the alternation uh, of two things. So you can take the thing on the left or on the right. Uh, this asterisk means repeat zero more times. And these brackets are there to express um, precedence. So the regular expressions are sets of strings over the alphabet given by the alphabet of your basic strings and the meta symbols. Regular expressions in concrete syntax are themselves just strings of these symbols. And I'm going to inductively define the shape of a syntactically correct regular expression by saying that any of the symbols in sigma is a valid regular expression. This special epsilon that says a regular expression matching only the empty string is a regular expression. This uh, other meta symbol, which means a regular expression matching nothing else, uh, is also a valid regular expression. And then if the things on top are regular expressions, then the things at the bottom are also regular expression. Wrapping one in brackets, uh, alternating between two of them, concatenating two of them, and um, repeating one of them zero or more times. I'm, I'm actually cheating because I'm telling you what they do as opposed to reading out the concrete syntax. At this stage, we are strictly only speaking about what they look like on the piece of paper. We are not saying anywhere what the semantics would be, whereas I'm talking about the semantics because I assume uh, that you are, um, I assume most of you are familiar with regular expression. For those who are not, uh, we should have an example, and I hope the slides have an example, though I don't know the slides by heart. Um, this is not an example of regular expression, it's just an example of deriving uh, syntactically correct regular expressions from the inductive rules that we just had. And this is just six derivations for various regular expressions, which you can work through and you see that they match. Now, the interesting thing is that in this row over here, these three derivations lead to this regular expression, which is triply valid as a syntactically correct regular expression. But if, you are, if your brain is still switched on and you're not just thinking, oh, right, there's only a few minutes before he closes and I can finally go to lunch, um, if you're instead still thinking about this, you should be quite upset. How many of you are upset? Well, a small minority. OK, we'll have lunch soon for all the others. But don't worry. So you're upset because you're saying, well, only one of these really makes sense. The other things, it's like they're violating the priority that we should be having uh, over these operators. And you would be correct in saying that. But actually, we are just doing formal stuff, mathematical stuff, where the only things that work are the things that we have said. So uh, if we haven't said there is precedence, then there isn't yet. Uh, but at some point we'll say it, and so there will be, but until then there isn't. So this is now the move between the concrete syntax, which is the strings of symbols and metasymbols we have seen, which can be combined in the ways prescribed by the inductive rules, and the abstract syntax. The abstract syntax is the way that you would have the regular expression inside your computer when you're going to operate on it, and it's something that respects its structure. And so you map each of the regular expression operators to one of these uh, primitives here, binary operators union and concat, uh, unary operator star, nullary operators null, empty, and symbol A, one for each A. And notice, uh, this is same thing expressed in the OCaml syntax, uh, notice uh, here, or maybe here, We are on slide 32 now. Notice that um, there is something uh, mapped to something that didn't even have a symbol 
in the regular expression syntax. So when we express the syntax, we said we have these symbols, the funny epsilon, the funny empty set, the brackets, and blah, blah. And we didn't have any symbol for expressing the concatenation. So it's not like I'm getting one of those abstract syntax operators for every one of the meta symbols. No. Uh, the concatenation is something I do by just putting things together. So it doesn't have any special symbol in the concrete syntax of regular expressions, but it corresponds to a major manipulation, which I represent as concatenating this original regular expression and this other one. So the stuff that you see here uh, is this is um, the mapping between the concrete syntax and the abstract syntax. And uh, in, uh, um, in the case of the union, you have this. So syntactically, it looks the same as just another identifier. But here, you have an operator in the concrete syntax. Here, you don't. And here, you have an operator instead, uh, in both cases, in the abstract syntax. And yet, at, at, at no point here have I said what the actual semantics would be. But uh, in the case of union, it means if my string matches either this or this, then it will match the, uh, the combined regular expression. And in this other case, if, if the first part, if the string can be split into two sections, the first part of which matches this regular expression, the second part of which matches this other one, then the whole string matches the combined regular expression. And then this star uh, is something from here you wouldn't see again, but it means um, if, if the string is made of zero more repetitions of something that matches the original uh, regular expression, then it matches the combined one. And notice here how the brackets in the concrete syntax are completely dropped from here because the structure of the tree keeps things apart as they should, so I don't need any brackets in here. So the brackets are there to disambiguate the concrete syntax, but are not used, not needed in the abstract syntax. 